Hello everyone. A big hearty welcome to all those who are watching this morning. And uh, today we are going to do some mix and match um, topics. We are going to look at uh, some of the things uh, that are from, you know, uh, various small, small topics. We are going to have picture based. We are going to have objective based questions. So let's go ahead and have a look at all these things. So now here we have, um, let's see if there is uh, anyone who is having any trouble logging in. Okay. okay. So here is um, some credentials that I want to show i'm um, md uh, from kmc manglo this is located at um, this is located at karnataka okay so that is one of my qualifications and there are multiple qualifications i have phd from savita university and i have also got uh, the medical transcription and uh, mba in hospital administration these are from the georgia usa so this is something I proudly want to um, tell and I also want this um, to be taken as a motivation. And if you want to work abroad, so these are some of the things. And one thing is very clear, the KMC gives you some of the degrees that are really, really worth, you know, um, studying in KMC. Because that is recognized worldwide. The moment I have got the degree and uh, I applied outside the country, they were recognized so well and they were given so much of respect. So that's why I would suggest you, if you happen to get a you know, seat in KNC, please don't leave. It is one of the finest colleges. Right. Other than that, we have a first question. Let's move on to the first question. Okay, so let's just quickly see if there is anything that... Um, Here we have the first question. During the surgical correction of the inguinal canal, during the surgical correction of the inguinal canal, the surgeon points towards the obturator foramen and says there is mild herniation through it, through the obturator foramen. Okay. So he says that there is mild herniation through it. And after correction, he will ask you which passes, what structure passes through the obturator foramen. So now, first of all, where is obturator foramen? You must have seen that there is a greater sciatic, there is a lesser sciatic foramen, right? And there is also one more foramen, which is covered by a membrane, which is called the obturator foramen. And here, one important tendon you can identify is the obturator internus tendon, which also helps you to form a canal that is called the obturator canal. So that is a very important tunnel or a tendon or a um, kind of um, a, you know, um, structure that protects all those contents inside. So what contents we have inside is the internal pudendal vessels and nerves. So all of these are the structures that are passing through that. So now in general, you answer all of the following. Which one? So now here there is internal pudendal vessels, obturator nerve, obturator artery. So these are the structures that will be passing through it, except which one? Except the obturator vein. So all these pass through it. That is the answer. Internal pudendal vessels and nerves. You have also heard of the pudendal nerve block. So that is why it is important. So now here it is, you can see the optor obturator internus, which uh, actually covers the pudendal vessels. And you can also see a small foramen. So through this, all those structures pass. So which is very, very important. And you can also see the spiriformis muscle. Where is this spiriformis muscle? It actually divides the Greater sciatic notch. 
it actually divides the greater sciatic notch. So here you can see these are the muscles which form the pelvic diaphragm. So pelvic diaphragm is a very important, um, you know, uh, partition which divides the pelvis. Okay, into the superficial area and the deeper area. So this levator ani, coccygeus, these are some of the important muscles. And you can see that they're all attached to the sacrum. So is the pyriformis. You can see the pyriformis attached. You can see the coccygeus attached. You can see the levator ani attached. So that means these are the muscles which are attached to the inner side of the sacrum. All right, let's move to the next one and see what we have. Okay, so now here you can see the pudendal vessels. What are the structures passing through the canal? I asked you, you have the pudendal nerve, internal pudendal vessels, and you can also see the nerve to obturator internals. So these are the structures that you can see. And you can also see the ligaments, sacrotuberous, sacrospinous ligaments. And these are the two ligaments which are really, really important um, ligaments, which also converts the greater sciatic you know, notch and lesser sciatic notch into foramina. These two are converted into foramina by these two ligaments. All right. So this is the pyriformis, another important muscle. So compression of the structures because of the pyriformis is known as pyriformis syndrome. That's another syndrome. So in this particular place, pyriformis syndrome is very important and also pudendal canal syndrome is very important. All right, so now here there is um, another explanation. So here obturator nerve that you can see, it emerges from the medial side of the psoas muscle. It crosses the lesser pelvis here. It passes through the ob obturator foramen into the medial side of the thigh. And what does it innervate? It innervates all those adductors, longus, brevis, gracilis, everything that is on the medial side. And its action is to adduct the eye region. All right. So now here, there is a picture which you have to identify. Identify this picture. What is this picture? This looks like an artery. You can see there are uh, three tunics actually. There is tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. Okay, so tunica intima, as the name suggests, it is the innermost one. And the adventitia is the outermost one. So intima, when you see intima has got um, the frill-like appearance, the internal elastic lamina. So that has got this one. It's called internal elastic lamina. So similarly, there is also external elastic lamina. This is called the external elastic lamina. And then you have the media and the adventitia. Adventitia is completely the one which has got collagen fibers. And this is the one which has got the muscles and elastic fibers. All right, so this is what you can see in this one. And a lot of elastic fibers are present. That's why it's also called elastic artery. And in other words, it's also called large artery. So large artery characteristic of any artery or any vein is three tunics. So you can see these are the characteristics of the wall. So they are called the tunica intima, media and the adventitia. But... The difference between the size of these each wall is what defines it, whether it's an artery or a vein. In case of artery, the medial is very thick. In case of vein, the adventitia is very thick. So you can see the thickness of the media. It is pretty much big and also it contains elastic fibers. So elastic fibers are more. That's why it is called the elastic artery. You can give the example of... Um, 
large artery as so give this as the example right so let's see what next we have um, So here, there is a picture you have to identify. Let's see if there is anyone who has any questions. Any questions? Sorry. So now here, this one is hemangioma. What is this one? These are all subcutaneous. So they are called subcutaneous hemangiomas. It is not just common in the limbs. It is also common in some of the other um, you know, uh, things. So it is a common tumor of the hand. This is how it involves. It involves those uh, blood vessels and all right. So you can see them, those elevations here and uh, all right. So next one, the sensory supply of the soft palate is the sensory supply of the soft palate is. So there is the soft palate, hard palate, and you know that soft palate has uh, five muscles. And uh, what are the muscles and what is the epithelium? Epithelium of the soft palate includes the outer epithelium of the soft palate includes the stratified squamous and non-keratinized epithelium. And what are those muscles? There are five muscles. Five muscles which are they? You can just list them out. We can just list them out. One is tensor valley palatini. Then there is um, levator valley palatini. And there is musculus jubilee. And then here we have um, musculus jubilee and you have the palatoglossus. And you have the palate of pharyngeus. So these are the five muscles that you can identify. This palatoglossus and palato pharyngeus, it also encloses that palatine tonsil between them. Okay, so that's why it is very, very important uh, set of muscles. And then you have the options here. What is the sensory nerve supply of the palate? So here you have glossopharyngeal and vagus. You have maxillary and mandibular. Then you have glossopharyngeal and maxillary, then none of the above. So let's see what is the nerve supply. So now here you can see that the sensory nerve supply is what we were talking about. So sensory nerve, nerve supply is through the maxillary. You can see the maxillary nerve supply. It is through the greater palatine, that is greater palatine. You have uh, uh, greater palatine nerve coming from the pterygopalatine ganglion. And you also have nasopalatine and lesser palatine. So one is greater palatine and you have lesser palatine and also the third one nasopalatine. So these are the structures which supply the soft palate. You can also see the foramina for them on the palate. So these are the ones which are supplying. So the nerve supply is through maxillary and also the glossopharyngeal. maxillary plus glossopharyngeal if you go back to that you can see the maxillary you can see here and uh, of course you can see the mandibular all right so that is a combination they have given you can take that and maxillary and uh, mandibular is the combination you have to remember all right next one the motor nerve supply motor nerve supply is also very important it is supplied by the pharyngeal plexus how is the pharyngeal plexus formed it is formed by the 9th, 10th and the 11th cranial nerves. So this is what forms the pharyngeal plexus. And here except one muscle, that is the tensor valley palatini, all the rest of them are supplied by 
the medial pterygoid nerve, which is a branch of mandibular. Okay, which is a branch of mandibular. So tensor belly palatini is one which is supplied by the pharyngeal plexus. So here it's very, very important any uh, lesion of the vagus nerve deviates the uvula to the opposite side. So this is the applied aspect you have to Deviation of the uvula is to the opposite side is the lesion of the vagus nerve. So that is because the pharyngeal plexus involves the vagus nerve. Next one, let's look at the picture where we have the greater palatine nerve, where we have the lesser palatine vessels and nerves you can see. And you also have the nasopalatine. Nasopalatine you can see through incisive foramen. This is through incisive. And you can see greater and the lesser palatine. Through greater palatine foramen and lesser palatine foramen. And you can also see the formation of the hard palate. It is through the maxillary process and the palatine process of the maxilla. Palatine process of the maxilla and the maxillary process of the palatine bones. So here we have the next question. Next question says, identify the tendon that is attached to the calcaneus. Now what tendon do you think is attached? Now you can see that there is the two big bulky muscles on the posterior compartment. The view is posterior compartment of the leg. Now here what muscles you see, the first thing I see is the superficial set. Superficial set has the gastronemius. You have two heads and you have soleus that is one single head. They form the superficial set, right? And in between that you also have this, uh, you know, the That is the superficial set. Then you have the deeper set, which are all the flexors. So you have flexor halysis. Then you have flexor digitorum. And you also have the popliteus here. Right? And then you also have the muzzle. Um, yes, these are the muzzles that you can see on the back side of the leg. So these are called the deeper set and this is very very important that there is the superficial set and the deeper set. What is their function? Their function is plantar flexion. Flexion and they are all supplied by the nerve tibial. Very, very important. And also these two together, they form a tendon that's called Achilles tendon. And that's what you can see here, Achilles tendon. This is the tendon. And this gastronemius and soleus complex, that also acts like a peripheral heart. So you have to remember that. And uh, in between that, you can see the small saphenous vein, you know, small saphenous vein running. Small saphenous vein um, joins the popliteal vein. So you can see that between the two sets of the muscles in the posterior compartment of the leg. So it's very interesting. You can see the gastronemius. We call that a scarf muscle. And you can see the tendon, which is pretty bulky and thick. And it is the solo tendon that performs such a huge action that is called the plantar flexion of the foot. Okay, so now here we have another question. A 34-year-old woman was, uh, she has a direct blow to the patella. Okay, she has a direct blow on the patella. So you know that patella is a sesamoid bone, right? It has a sesamoid bone. How she had direct blow? Patella is kept in position and it has the muscles on either side that is vastus lateralis and la vastus medialis that is 
keeping it in position. And these are uh, uh, the muscles which stabilize the patella and keeps it in place. And this is uh, the accident that happened because of uh, an automobile crash and woman is admitted to the emergency department. And you can see the radiographic examination. It reveals a patellofemoral syndrome, okay? Because patella is associated with the femur, not with the tibia. So it is a patellofemoral joint. And there is a syndrome. What is the syndrome? It is characterized by the lateral dislocation of the patella. So patella has shifted to the lateral side. What does that mean? There is this muscle on the medial side, which is not able to pull it back and maintain its stability. So when something is moved away, that means the opposite side is not pulling it enough. Okay. So we have to see what is that muscle that is preventing or that is prevented from keeping it in the center. So laterally, we have lateral um, lateralis. And medially, we have vastus medialis, okay? So, we have to think which muscle was supposed to work because the dislocation is on the lateral side. So, here is during the extension of the knee joint, okay, natural tendency of the patella is to dislocate laterally. Sudden dislocation, if it has to happen, the the dislocated patella is always moving to the lateral side. So now here medialis, vastus medialis inserts upon the medial aspect of the patella and lateralis obviously to the lateral side. So it is supposed to draw the patella medially, especially in the last quarter of the extension. So when that doesn't happen, the patella can get dislocated laterally. So the culprit is the inability of vastus medialis to maintain the position of the patella. So this is what you have to remember. All right, so the answer was vastus medialis. Next, coming to a patient, okay, he experiences paralysis. He experiences the paralysis of the muscle that originates from the femur. Paralysis of the muscle that originates from the femur, okay. So here, um, it originates from the femur and it contributes directly to the stability of the knee joint. He experiences of the muscle that originates from the femur it contributes directly to the stability of the knee joint. So you have to see what is the key muscle that helps in stabilizing the knee joint. One of the things that stabilizes is the quadriceps. Quadriceps are the ones which are in front. They're all extensors of the knee joint. So our knee is always extended. So whenever that extension is present, that's how in extension it is stabilized by the muscles quadriceps. So quadriceps involves three vastus and one straight muscle that is called the rectus. Rectus femoris we call it as. Rectus femoris. So we have to see which one now. Vastus lateralis, semitendinosus, semimembranosus. We also have sartorius here. Which one? So all these are the sartorius is of course present in the front, but this does not belong to, does not belong to quadriceps. Okay, this is hamstring group. This is also hamstring. So no. So the answer is the vastus lateralis. Okay, vastus lateralis is the one uh, which is supposed to stabilize the knee joint. Okay, so here we have the muscles. We have the vastus. We have the sartorius. We can see there. We can see that all of them actually contribute to the stabilization of the knee joint, but the vastus lateralis muscle is the one which arises from the femur. As you can see, the lateralis is on the lateral aspect. This is the one. Okay, so this is, I can shade it for you it's on the lateral side, and that is the one which 
originates from the hip bone. It is a coxal bone. So there is this muscle which helps in stabilization of the knee joint. All right, let's go to the next one. The question here is, you and your family um, go to Rishikesh. Just imagine that you went to Rishikesh to attend a Mela, Kum Mela. And uh, your grandmother, she tries to take a dip in the holy water. But she's the one who is not physically active. And she found it very difficult to get back up and you assisted her. She was not able to sit up straight when she took the thing because she is to perform. You realize that she was not able to perform extension at the knee joint and would advise exercises at home targeting which muscle. So once she wanted to stand up straight, she was not able to extend it because the knee was already bent. Okay. So now what is a muscle that helps in extension? So extension of the knee joint is done by the quadriceps. We just discussed about the quadriceps. We talked about four muscles which help in extension of the knee joint. Whenever there is an extension at the knee joint, there is always flexion at the hip joint. So remember, these same set of muscles do the flexion at the hip joint. And these muscles are all supplied by the, uh, the muscles that are the, the nerve that supplies the thigh region that is called the sciatic nerve. Sorry, femoral nerve. It's supplied by femoral nerve. Flexors are supplied by femoral nerve. All right. So here we have the next question. The biceps femoris, a muscle of the thigh, is located posteriorly. We know that the hamstrings group is located posteriorly. And uh, one of the muscle, key muscle or prime mover is biceps femoris. Along with that, we also have semitendinosus, semimembranosus. And do you know that biceps is gotten the name because it has two heads. It has a medial head and a, or you can also call it as long head. Long head and short head. Short head is very, very important. And long head is the one. Long head actually is from the hip bone. And the short head is from the femur. Okay, short head is from the femur. And this one is supplied by common peroneal branch. And this one is supplied by the tibial branch. So remember this, it has got different nerve supply. Even though the common peroneal and tibial are the branches of sciatic, you have both the branches supplying two different heads. So you have all these are the you know, options of which the longer head belongs to hamstring group of muscle and causes what? Longer head belongs to the hamstring group of muscles and what does it do? So longer head belongs to hamstring group of muscles. So we have uh, hamstrings do flexion at the knee. So they do flexion at the knee because they are on the back side. And when they do flexion at the knee, they do the opposite to the hip. Hip is extension. So let's look for this particular option. There is hip and knee flexion. Knee extension is wrong. Knee flexion, but hip also flexion. No. Hip and knee extension. No. What about this one? Last one. Hip extension. And knee flexion. Yes, this is the correct answer. This is done by hamstrings. Out of the hamstrings, especially the long head of biceps. Femoris. Okay, this is the action of biceps. Femoris long head. Alright, so that is what gives you a clear picture. Now you can see from where it takes origin. Very close to the acetabulum. Have you seen the acetabulum? The acetabulum has around it an elevated region. From that elevated region, you can see the origin of long head. Look at the long head origin. So this is the origin point of long head. 
okay so just about that ischial tuberosity region and you also have short head and that is the linear aspera short head of biceps on the linear aspera you actually have uh, you know it's on the back side of the femur and you have one two three as the insertion what is this one two three insertion you can say one is biceps femoris two is two vastus and three is three adductors so this biceps femur is what i'm talking about is the short head so remember this short head of biceps femoris is what is on the linea aspera and long head of biceps femoris is what is on the ischial tuberosity and you know that ischial tuberosity gives attachment to hamstrings that's why we mentioned that the hamstring group of muscle the long head belongs not the short head all right so this is all uh, the origin insertion and insertion is common you can see them both of them go to the lateral aspect of the fibula so this also forms the lateral boundary of the popliteal fossa and here is one last um, thing that shows you development of the tongue so here there is a nice picture which uh, you know gives you a it it gives you a nice uh, you know image of development of the tongue you have lingual swellings here you also have tuberculum impar so these are all going to form the anterior two third of the tongue you can see the blue one i let me just use a different color here and you can see the blue one this forms um a small portion on the lower part that is going to form the root of the tongue so you can see there is a blue color and light green color these two are the hypobranchial eminence hypobranchial eminence has the cranial and a caudal part the cranial part will give rise to the posterior one third and the caudal part will give rise to the root of the tongue and that is about which one that is about the epithelium of the tongue what about the muscles the muscles also are originated from something called the occipital somite so occipital somites give rise to that so if someone asks you what are the pharyngeal arches that is involved you can say the first arch you can say there is the second arch there is the third and the fourth all these together give rise to the tongue so so many things are involved in the formation of the tongue right and you can also see the occipital somite they give rise to intrinsic extrinsic and connective tissue of the tongue all right other than that you also see a small foramen that is called foramen cecum that is where the development of the thyroid gland starts a thyroid gland descends downwards and forms a small diverticulum that's thyroglossal duct all right so now here is some of the dedications from my students who have been really nice and uh, my favorites because they have put in so many dedicated hours to learning and you can also see that they are happy with their dedications because they have learned so much from an academy learning platform so here is the their dedications you can see the orange hat yellow hat and many things and there are some more for the teachers day and i'm really happy and glad that i have such students and you can also see that there is a telegram channel that you can look at uh, let's crack neat pg you can join this telegram you can also download pdf of all other educators plus you can also join anatomy group which i have uh, anatomy by dr roini where we discuss lot of anatomy questions which are it's a whole lot it's like a huge um, ocean anatomy so it's very difficult to you know um discuss everything under this platform so now here what do we do some things that is not possible we always ask you suggest you to go for subscription so please go ahead take the subscription there is plus subscription there is iconic subscription and you have some questions you can always connect with the educator you can connect with me by using this telegram link anatomy by dr roini all right so here is the special of uh, details we have it on wednesdays so every wednesday there will be at least three special classes the timings and other things will be notified shortly and please do join for all the special classes because loads and loads of mcqs is what we going to do with explanations 
and here is the special class features they are very special because of the interactive live class series it's, it's very interactive you can connect with the educator you can use the you know features like poll you can use the raise a hand you'll never miss a class and you'll also get lecture notes and here is a code referral code and here is plus and iconic subscriptions that you can see and also there is a one month package so one month package always allows you to you know go for various uh, um you know it keeps you really busy with the ultra fast high yielding revision series and you'll also get mcq sessions and you'll also have neat pg test and analysis batch so it really really keeps you very busy with the curriculum and there are also uh, updated and highly effective question bank series and you can also see there is 12 plus 2 option where 2 months is completely free so you go for 12 month subscription you have 2 months free but also one more advantage is you get the pdf notes in the subscription and you can also see there is 4 year subscription you can go for this when you are in ug if you take this up you can get not only the advantage in UG, but you also going to get a good smooth transition towards your PG. So when you go to your PG, you don't have to separately start, um, you know, preparing for the exams because your UG foundation is so good. That's why you have to go for something called four year subscription so that your foundation is neat from the beginning itself. So this is INR 60,000 and INR 75. And if you want to go with EMI option, that is also welcome because 1250 is for plus per month and uh, 1406 per month, that is with the plus. So this is, uh, that is with the iconic. And uh, this is for 48 months. Like that, you have to take at least uh, six months, you know, uh, subscription. And you have 36, 24, 18, 12, as less or low as six months subscription. With this, you can try it out also. So all this, you want to avail discount, please use the code. It's uh, ROHINI10. So ROHINI10. Use this code, not just for getting the discount, but also to access things. This, when you use, you can also access my special classes. So how do you go with the special classes? You just have to download the Unacademy Learners app. So once you download, you have to next step is first is download next step is to go for the competitive exams and then you go to the neat pg section where uh, you can see the educators upcoming classes so you look at upcoming classes and then you click on whichever class you are clicking on my class then use the code rohini10 so once you enter the code you will be most welcome to the learners class so here you have the special class and uh, the time is notified you will get a notification prior to the class and next moment whenever the class begins you are in the class right away so that is as simple as that and this is more interactive because i'll be able to message you you can ask the questions and also you get the pdf notes at the end of the class isn't this nice so please download the Unacademy Learners app and interact with me even more. So this is the end of this particular session and I'll see you all again with more classes. Thank you so much for joining.